On the mic with Mike, you heard the man. This is the best business radio program around. Why? Because we get the best guests and I got the best partners. It is Monday. A lot of important topics out in the world. None more important than the HR world for business owners. I bring to you, ladies and gentlemen, the expert, our guru, Danielle Gilbert is here with us. Welcome to the program, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good enough. I'm working on my radio voice. Uh, a lot of things going on in your world. Let folks know who you are really quickly, and then we'll dive into whatever it is you want to enlighten us on today. Absolutely. So good morning. Good morning, Danielle Gilbert, your virtual HR strategist and CEO of Manifesting You Consulting, where we simply help small to medium-sized companies really minimize their risk, avoid losses, and save them thousands of dollars simply through organizational assessment, leadership development, training and development, and HR consulting. And you can find me on all social media platforms at Manifesting You, or you can simply text your name and email address to 804-829-3722. Daniel Gilbert is also going to be a guest at one of my, with Mike, we're doing the uh, 2021 uh, summit at the Fairfield, where we're talking about post-COVID, the post-COVID RVA business landscape. Danielle Gilbert is one of our speakers there. She's going to be a uh, talking HR topics and uh, enlightening our listeners. That program will air on May 17th. That would be next Monday. So Danielle Gilbert is gracing the airways with us. Uh, a lot of heavy hitters there, and obviously she's part of the group. So that was just a shameless plug that Danielle Gilbert, the floor is yours. Yes, yes. So, you know, Mike, over the past couple, I want to say days, weeks, I have seen this is not necessarily an HR topic, but I think it's an important business topic that there are folks out here charging um, individuals to create an EIN number and to help them establish their business. You touched on that a couple of weeks and you're back I, on it again. You're seeing, I, <laughs> you know, Mike, because I was just sitting here and I was appalled because I was strolling through um, Facebook. And someone simply said, hey, how do I set up my business, right? And I'm like, just go to the State Corporation Commission, right? And someone was like, well, I can help you. And so I go look, you know, surfing. And someone literally is out here, like, and I'm not going to say someone, there are many people out here charging individuals to set up and register their business and get an EIN number. Okay. And I just want to just reiterate that just from a business perspective and even looking at it from HR, like why are you charging people to set up a business that you simply go online to the SEC, you go in, make sure that your company's name is available. You pay the hundred dollars depending on where you are, but typically it's a hundred bucks. The EIN number is free through the IRS.gov. You go to wherever you reside, you get your, um, business license and then you find insurance to protect you from like general liability insurance and i just got to say that before i jump into the whole hr thing because that really bothers me so a person can all these things that you're talking about can be done without help without paying someone to do it right and i know there you know some people don't want to physically go out and do it. But what I'm saying to individuals, if you don't have the time, that's something different. And if you choose to seek a coach or someone to help you do that. But what I'm saying is that you don't have to spend thousands of dollars, even hundreds of dollars to go out and simply do something that is free, that takes just time and effort to read and go online and go through the process. Now, asking someone for help, and if that's someone's business, but even still, those items that is required to start your business is simply most of it is free unless you're registering and paying the hundred dollars to make sure that you're reserving the name for your business. And you go to wherever you are. Like, again, I'm in Henrico, Virginia. So I go to the county of Henrico and I make sure that I get my business license. 
I wanted to just put that out there for again, because I know I talked about it about maybe two or three weeks ago, but that it just eats at my soul. Because if people are out there, I see those same people asking for, hey, I can help you with, with these things. And these are things that you can do on your own without paying someone to do. So <clears throat> I'm glad that you are keeping us informed. Uh, what else do you have for us today? Yeah. So the other thing I want to simply say, there is a, um, from an HR perspective, just giving individuals, leaders, a simple way to ensure that they are keeping their employees engaged. So when we, and what I mean by that, Mike, is recently I've had a client who <clears throat> wanted to feel like their employees are not listening or their employees are not feeling like they're part of the organization. And I touched on this again, um, probably a couple of weeks ago too, but I'm bringing it all this back up because as I continue to scale my own business from HR and helping other companies build their HR department, it is very important that you as the leader of your organization have and allow your employees to have a voice and to sh allow them to share things that need to change within the organization. Um, if that's if you're the only person who is in the business and you only have a small number of employees, get a manager or someone who can help you bridge that gap from a communication standpoint that allows your employees to truly share their voice and feel like they are part of your organization and keep your employees engaged. Um, you know, I was reading recently reading an article and the um, unemployment rate, you know, is at like 6.1%. And so what are we doing to make sure that we're keeping the current talent that we have? And part of that is making sure that you are keeping your employees engaged. So whether that's doing team building, whether that's having one-on-ones, um, one thing that I find is feedback. Leaders are not giving their employees the feedback that they need prior to their performance evaluation. So Mike, let me ask you this. Have you ever had a performance evaluation and when you got into the performance evaluation, you were surprised by the feedback? Because the feedback isn't there most of the time. Uh, you go in not knowing what's going to happen. And I'm surprised by the feedback or lack thereof. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the things that, that I did notice, the military is kind of big on, on that idea right there. But I think the bigger picture is like the whole open communication, whether it's we have an open door policy. Everybody says they have an open door policy. You got to say it, but do the employees believe it? And that sometimes that's that's good for communication, like you said, and give them the feedback. Because if the unemployment rate is that, you're trying to hold on to your talent, and you talked about like culture and the emotional quotient that people are talking about and doing. You you got to have a good environment. Mm -hmm. And one of the things about communication is you have to. If I have an issue with the company, can I bring it to them and they, you know, talk to me or value my opinion the same way as if I have my evaluation, are they really going to give me positive feedback? Yeah, but you know, you said something that struck me just a second ago. You said, you know, do they believe, do, do employees believe that they can go and have an open door policy? Do they believe it? So what would cause someone not to believe it because if companies say that there is an open door policy why would you not believe that especially if you haven't experienced a negative impact by giving or going to open you know going to someone and say hey i have this issue why would you think employees wouldn't believe that there's an open door policy i think if you work in a company and the culture isn't correct then history tells a person i'm not going to trust that because so and so went it's just like the suggestion box. Not a, <laughs> really, Mike? Really? That's okay. That's where I'm going with this. That's why I'm my own radio show because it's what when you get the suggestion box, you kind of put it, you don't have to put your name on it or whatever. Sometimes people look at that kind of skeptical. You know, it's kind of like really, because they're gonna value or or tie me to that, whether it's a complaint, whether it's an issue or something like that. If you have a good culture, people believe that the system will work for you. If you don't, people are going to be skeptical because so-and-so went to HR, they had a problem because the word is out there, you know, whether management mm -hmm. hears it. In the military, you don't go to the leaders to figure out what's happening. You go to people on the ground. They're going to tell you the real deal. Management officer levels, people are going to tell you what 
it should be what is correct, but the people on the ground know. So if you have a good culture, people believe that there's an open board door policy and you can go and there won't be retribution. If you don't, people are gonna look at that. I'm not going in there with that because so-and-so went before and it didn't work out for them. And how do I know? Because people can't hold water, you know, uh, they can't. People are gonna complain to the next person. And next thing you know, the word gets around in the company and now you have to put out that fire. See, you're scared. You shouldn't ask me that question. I'm sorry. I, I see that that, you know, drew a lot of emotions around that. And that, but you you bring up a lot of good points of when I think about HR and how a lot of organizations are not getting the memo around the importance of culture and how do you build a, po a positive culture? How do you make sure that your employees feel that they can come to you? They can have a conversation, right? And so it ties all back into even, like I said, the performance evaluation process. Nothing should be a surprise. So if you are being an effective leader throughout the process, you should be giving constant feedback to your employees. So the moment they have a performance evaluation, it is not- A, a shocking a, a, moment. Right. Because you told me all along, Mike, you know, your writing needs to, or Mike, you need to get here on time, or Mike, you, you know, we, we're trying to correct those things along the way so that when I get to the evaluation, I'm not looking at something that looks foreign to me because we've had that conversation over the months. Absolutely. And it, and you know, and what it also does, it builds that that sense of belonging, which is what I touched on last Monday, that if you have that positive culture that fosters social connections, it encourages positivity, it allows you to create goals, it allows, you know, you ability to grow within the organization. When you think about all of that, it comes full circle, it comes 360 to say, okay, I have a positive culture. My employees believe in what we are doing. They believe in the mission. They be believe in the vision. And they're going to help the organization get to the next level because they believe in what the organization is doing. The other thing too is to work as a team. And a lot of times companies lack the ability to collaborate across departments, right? That's so, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Like that is a major one because they're in, they have this isolation where there are pockets of this group and working together, but you're not cross communicating or cross collaborating with people in another department, which causes the friction and causes that gap of, like you say, lack of communication and really being able to create a positive environment. Sometimes so, I, I don't think business owners understand if you're in the right environment, employees will run through walls for you. Mm. They, they will. I mean, that's, yeah. and it's not about the money. It's about people love to belong to a team. And if the yeah. team is winning, okay, you were going to squabble about a little bit this and that. Uh, the one thing that they, I guess, Pat Riley talked about was when you win, it's the disease of me. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. I have to keep mine. Boy, but if you have good culture in a company, it's good for the bottom line because people buy in. You know, HR it understands that engineering is talking to sales, is talking to manufacturing, is talking to the tech folks. Everybody understands. Everybody here in the building has the same. They know what the you know the philosophy of the company is. Not just the salespeople out there pitching it to people. So that's my stance. Absolutely. No, no, and that's that's very important. So you know, a, a couple companies that I believe that you know, really have a positive culture is Google, Apple, a lot of you, when you think about it and you look at their diversity, equity, and inclusion strategy, you look at their retention and turnover rate is very low. Like a lot of individuals stay within those organizations because they understand why the company exists. They believe what they do, right? And they believe in the values. They believe where the company is going. Can, so I, ask truly, you, mm -hmm. can I ask you, when, when you said that, if, if there's a high, a uh, low retention rate, does that equate to not a good culture? Or, or, or you know, like when you said about those companies there, they have high retention rates, people like to work there, all those things. If you have on the flip side, you're all, the employees are always turning over, the morale is low. Does that say something about your culture? 
Absolutely. It says something about your culture. It may even say a lot about your leadership. It says a lot about what you are instilling in your employees, right? And so part of that process, I this is probably a whole nother show, but really giving the employees a red carpet onboarding treatment. So just, you know, how you go to Hollywood and you stand on a red carpet and they treat you like royalty and they, they give you this experience. Yes, right, go right. Back and, I get right. that every morning when I come into uh, ESPN Richmond. See, you, you get that red carpet. So you feel special. So just it. imagine if you built that in your organization and you had open communication, you had feedback within the first 90 days and you had constant feedback. You was able to say, okay, I am concerned about what and how my employees feel. So when you have your retention where you're keeping your employees, that speaks value. When you have where your employees are constantly being turned over or they're leaving, a lot of times they're leaving for money, but most of the times it's not money, it's the leaders, the people in the organization why people leave companies. Danielle Gilbert's here with us. How can people find you out there? Yes, Danielle Gilbert, simply send me your name and your email address to stay up to date. And you can simply text me that at 804-829-3722. That's what I learned from Danielle Gilbert. Rock with the telephone number. It cuts out some steps. It goes right to you. One of my quick mic, the best business radio program around. Why? Because they get the best guests and, and the best partners. Uh, we'll be back on the other side. We got to go away for a minute. Thanks now. I'm gonna have six minutes. Six minutes that you press your own.
Hello, I'm John Brandt, Executive Director of the Colonia Heights Chamber of Commerce. We are a collaboration of business, government, and school professionals with a goal to enhance the Colonia Heights business community. With the Colonia Heights Chamber, you receive access to our weekly newsletter, monthly membership networking months, our bi-monthly community connections virtually, and so much more. These features can help you enhance your economic success personally and professionally in the Colonia Heights community. To learn more, join today at ColoniaHeightsChamber.com. This weather is brought to you by Cena Hospitality, a true leader in RDA hospitality and events. Cena Hospitality. We'd like to thank our good friends over at Cena Hospitality for sponsoring the weather. Today, weather, isolated thunderstorms in the morning becoming more widespread in the afternoon. A high 79 degrees, uh, winds out of the southwest 10 to 20 miles an hour. Chance of rain 60%, humidity at 59%, UV index 7 out of 10. Ladies and gentlemen, it's, uh, it's going to be a little bit of a, a, a different day, a little overcast, but that's right. We'll make the best of it. It's Monday. We're starting off. Danielle Gilbert is here with us. So, Danielle, we're talking about culture, HR, and best business practices. What else do you have for us? Yeah. So, the other thing um, that, you know, we are want to bring to leaders' attention is making sure that as you are building your HR department, whether you are a person of one or you are a person of 200, when you are starting off, start off with the foundation. And part of your foundation is making sure that you have a handbook and policies in, in place with the anticipation of growing from maybe one to 200 employees. And the reason for that is once you begin to onboard um, employees, you will have those things in place and you will not be running around trying to figure out how do you hire me, your HR consultant, to come in and do the work because it's already in place. Um, <clears throat> recently was working with someone who simply was like, I'm ready to, to hire and had nothing in place to begin the process. Understanding where you are and where you wanna go. So if you are at a place where you're starting off solo and then you wanna grow, anticipate that grow, create a plan. One thing, even from not just from an HR, but from a business perspective, it is important that you have a plan because if you have a plan, you can then implement and execute the plan. If you don't have a plan, you don't know where you're going. You're shooting and from the hip every important. time. You're, yeah. you're always you're always creating. Everything's a one-off, and, and and especially in the sales business too. You know, there's always the one-off. That's true, but the one-off can't be the system because you never can count on it. You never can track it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I don't think a lot of business owners understand what it means that although you may not have employees or you cannot afford someone to come in and manage your day-to-day -day operations, i.e. including HR, don't ever discount the importance of HR having a seat at your table. And that's why you're there. So let the listeners know the importance of, of contacting Danielle Gilbert and uh, how you can help them. Yes. So as a HR strategist and also um, what I offer is what we call fractional HR. So if you're not in a place where you can hire uh, me as a full-time retainer consultant, I offer memberships. I have the ability where we offer a la carte services to truly help you minimize your risk and avoid lawsuits. And I'm simply here to be that person where you're not implying or impacting your business by trying to hire a full-time staff member to manage that process. So definitely contact me at 804-829-3722, and I can simply give you the, the individual services that you need to ensure that you are having HR at the table and you have the resources and tools needed to be successful. 
One of the things that, and a shout out to our good friend, uh, Sarah Ellen Bagby is out there is talking about documentation, having a plan and a playbook up front. It cuts down on the confusion and problems on the back end. When people show up to your door, what is one of the glaring things that you see that they're, that you kind of see on a regular basis as people are trying to scale their business from say one to five or say from five to 10 or 20 to 50? They don't have a plan. They don't know what they're gonna do. They don't know how many employees they need to hire. They don't know how much they're going to pay that employee if they're gonna offer benefits. They don't have any idea the only thing that they're looking at is the end result. And they are saying, I need money, but I need people to make the money. So let me just fill the position with the body. Filling a position with the body actually is going to cost you probably triple than what you're going to pay when you originally hired that person. Because nine times out of 10, if you didn't do your due diligence to fully and, um, and interview them and have your policies and procedures in place, you're going to have to terminate them, especially if they're not good. So I always advise anyone who's starting a business and know that you're going to need employees, get your policies and procedures and your processes in order before you do anything else. Part of your business plan should be human resources. And I, I guess one of the things is that's, you know, no offense, ma'am, but that's not the, the sexy part that, you know, when people talk about it, it's not. And so what happens is the person starts to run into problems and they have to contact Danielle Gilbert. How can people find you out there again for the very important services that you offer? That's it exactly what <laughs> it ain't sexy, but it's uh, it's good. So we got to run really quickly. Tell us how you can reach you. 804-829-3722, or you can simply purchase my book, That HR is Not That Bad, Seven Ways to Create an Effective HR Department. I am Danielle Gilbert, your virtual HR strategist. I was going to feel that Kim's giving me a wrap up. Got to go. Take Gotta care. Go. Talk to you Bye. soon. Bye. Okay.